Uh, and could I get you to quickly flip to the website first? Uh, okay. Um, hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to SIMMAX Thursday 30 and um, especially welcome Swapnall and Annie from Therapy Box who are going to be telling us all about VocaQuest today. Um, really brilliant because I understand it's a free tool for people so um, uh, yeah brilliant. I've sent it out to lots of people. I know we sometimes have um, late sign ups and we send the recording afterwards so if you don't mind we've we've got it recorded and then we'll we'll put it up on our website so people can we can share it with people and they can log in and see it so thank you very much and i'll hand over to you both thank you so much Catherine. Uh, and annabelle for reaching out uh, my name is Robin. i am uh, the ceo and co-founder of therapy box i also have annie with me uh, who is closely associated with everything we do at Therapy Box, you know, project management, developing work request, uh, and uh, marketing as well. So we are going to do um, a bit of a joint run through. She's going to navigate the screens and I'm going to provide a bit of commentary as well. Please do feel free to just step in at any time, ask any questions, uh, but uh, uh, for the time being, I'll get us started. But before we do, uh, it would be good to know the type of caseload that the attendees have at the moment. So is it mostly pediatrics or is it adults? If you just give me a sense that I can just try and focus more on that area. So if um, any of you could just sort of raise your hand or uh, give us some sort of sign on screen if you work with pediatrics. OK, so some hands up. Perfect. OK, so um, WorkerQuest is a digital resource platform. It is built for speech and language therapists to use with clients. So um, and if you scroll down a touch, uh, you would notice that it's a, it's um, got nearly 6000 ready to use resources as well. It's available on iPads and it's available on web platform as well. So how does WorkerQuest work? There are three simple steps. You Create an account. I'll show you how. Uh, once you're in, you create your caseload and then you plan your activities for that particular uh, child or adult that you're working with. Then you deliver therapy. You could deliver that therapy in clinic with them, or you could set up a therapy plan for them so they do therapy in their own time from home or school. Um, or you could do it through teletherapy as well. We offer that option too. So that's the step two of delivering therapy. And the step three is you get a report. And based on the report, you can then decide what the next course of action is. So every activity you do is recorded. So you've got a fuller picture of that particular client's um, performance up to date. So if you go a little touch down. Um, OK, now who is WorkQuest for? It is for speech and language therapists. Um, it is also for schools. Um, and it's also for parents, um, but primarily it's for users. So speech therapists can create an account and put together a plan or, and also administer the therapy themselves. Uh, speech therapists could offer it to schools and uh, they could put together a plan and the schools could help uh, follow the therapy plan that you put together for um, the students. And parents could do the same at home where the practitioner puts together a plan and the parents can follow the plan as well from the comfort of their own home. So um, the huge advantage of WorkQuest is that it, the, the platform goes beyond your contact hours and offers the ability for the students uh, and, um, and kids to carry on practicing beyond the practitioner hours. OK, so if you go down a little bit more, so why 
work quest. So it's comprehensive. As I mentioned, there are 6,000 free built activities ranging from speech, language, social skills, fluency, voice. Uh, it's engaging because it's got a load of different games uh, to pick from. Uh, it also comes in flashcard format. Um, it's got uh, printables, so any activity that you create, you can also print. Uh, it's time saving because all the reporting you do not have to write down manually. It just gets recorded uh, behind the scenes. So for speech, you or a parent can mark the children as the activity goes on digitally on the tool itself. For language, it's even cleverer because we know what the correct answer is, so we can record it on uh, in the background without you or the child having to interact at all. So the reporting is pretty powerful and seamless at the same time. Number five, you can make your own material. So we offer studio features. So we've got 6,000 um, activities that are ready to use, but you may have some other specific needs as well. Uh, it could be down to that particular child, that school, that environment, the language that they use, and so on. So you could build your own activities as well. And for that, it's free to use. OK, so um, I hope uh, I have convinced you to create an account with request. And if you do decide to do that, what you would do is tap on that sign up button in your top right corner. Annie very likely has a account. So um, I will show you when you have created an account, what happens next. So if you log in, uh, you will notice that um, you will go into a screen where you would then be shown a case load page. So um, um, on that caseload, you've got the ability to create up to 30 clients. So you could have, say, you know, in this case, and he's got two clients called uh, Jan and Annie, um, but you can create uh, as many as you like. So Annie, let's go ahead and create a new client. OK, so here we can put in a new client called Senmac as an example. Um, and you can choose a date, uh, birth, month, and birth year. Um, uh, note that we're not uh, requiring a precisely identifiable date of birth. Uh, you can choose your game outside. You can choose your LLS learning. Is it on or off? So you can administer therapy as you please. Um, you've got themes, so you've got work first theme at the moment. You can choose skin tones. You can personalize it for that individual you're working with. Um, and then you can see there is a client dashboard access. So there's a username and there's a password. So I mentioned before that um, you can put together a therapy plan and then you can ask uh, the client to practice at home. So if they want to do that or from school for that matter, you just need to pass them that username password that you automatically created unique for that individual as such. We'll come to that in a moment, but for now, we will act as if we are the practitioner. So we'll create the client. Now, um, if you created a client, you can proceed to creating any goals for that client, or you can start doing activities with them. So we can dismiss that for now. And what you would see here is a few activities that you hand picked, but you can really go and start browsing. So you go to browse activities. Now, this is where the so nearly 6,000 activities uh, that we have in the library that you can see. Now, that's a lot, which is great. But then we also need a way to filter it down quite nicely. So you can see on the left, you got filters that you can fine tune to have a handful of results to pick from. So that meets your specific requirements, or you also have some quick uh, tags at the top. So you can just uh, simply tap on flashcards or bundles or flow and say we need to get those required um, matching results. But for now, we'll go to the left panel and let's say we want a screener. So you will start with screening. So we'll just pick screeners. So we've got seven screeners there. So if you go to the therapy category, um, you'll see that the screeners could be speech. So if you tap on speech, you've got cycles approach. So hots and cycles is something some might be familiar with. It's uh, particularly well known in the US. Um, you've got a speed sound screener that you can run through, uh, or you've got a voice screener as well. Uh, if you wanted a language, um, a screener, then you got a language checklist, you got a social skill screener, and you got a fluency screener as well. But for now, what we will do is pick a therapy resource. So if you untap screener on the left, you go to therapy resources. Um, now, uh, 
right at the top, uh, you would notice that you've got therapy approaches. But before that, let's pick um, let's pick therapy category to be speech, because I might be wrong here, but it is quite likely that you'll have more speech clients than you would have language clients. So let's assume you've got a client who's got speech uh, difficulties. Um, so you pick on speech now from 5,926, you're down to 5,000 results. Uh, let's take a select category area. We'll drop that down and then we we'll choose uh, single sounds. You could also choose CV, phonological voice, but we we'll choose single sounds and then we we'll choose initial sound of uh, R seems to be typically a problem. So let's go to initial sound of R. OK, perfect. So now you've got about 350, so we can now choose which position you want that row in. So now let's just say it's the initial position that you're interested in. So now you're down to 242. Um, let's say we want a flashcard approach here, so uh, we can choose that. Now you've got a game associated with it, like coloring and so on. But if you scroll down and touch and you make it gameless as well. So uh, on the left, it, yeah, there you go. So you just call that no game. So now we've got a pure flashcard. So this is something that you would easily play with. So let's choose initial uh, flashcard set one. Now you can see that there are still nine results. So just for R, for initial position, you've got nine activities. Now, there are three things you could do here. You could print it. So this is the free printable that we were talking about. You could simply get this particular um, you know, set uh, that we've chosen, in this case, set one, and you can print it out in a paper form. And you can do it in a in a physical um, uh, form, or you could add it to a therapy plan. This is where either a school or a parent can do it in their own home or environment. Or you could start now. So if you're in a clinic, you could administer that particular activity right away. So let's try and do that now. OK, so in the top left, you would notice that you've got a delivery mode of in clinic, which is what we prefer to do. But you could also do two device or you could do teletherapy. Two device means especially comes in handy when you're doing a screener. So uh, if you were doing speech sound screener and you did not want the child to get distracted by how you're marking them, you could give them a device and you could have your own device. Um, so they would simply get shown the stimulus and then you would be able to mark them separately. So they won't see how you're marking them. So they can just focus on, on their uh, speech productions. And teletherapy is as you would expect, a bit like what we're doing now, but teletherapy is built in. So what we do with teletherapy is that the child will have the stimulus appear on their screen and you can mark them remotely on your side. They don't see how you're marking them in teletherapy. Um, sometimes they can also navigate themselves. You can choose to have the navigation control taken away from them or give them. So that's the teletherapy side of things. But in clinic is when you're doing it in a face-to-face -face format. So we'll do this now. So let's go to confirm and you can go ahead. Right, you get a few um, handy instructions on how to play, uh, especially suitable for when teaching staff at school are going to administer it or parent is administering it at home. Um, so we will get started. Now, um, this um, particular card uh, will produce RAG as a speech output. Uh, because we are in a video call, you can't hear it, but otherwise it would produce that uh, speech output called RAG. Um, and if uh, that particular uh, production was satisfactory, you would mark it as in green, correct? Perfect. We go on to the next one, and uh, this time you got race. Uh, so it would say race out loud. You could play it back if you wanted. You can tap the card again and it does the playback. Um, and then on the left bottom, you can see that uh, you've got a record option as well. So if you wanted to capture what this sounded like, so it appears in your report, you could do that as well. So very quickly, let's just do a quick recording. Um, and then you say that. So we'll mark this um, uh, as incorrect. So um, in this case, we can hear that auditory feedback is um, not as positive. Uh, so we've gone to the next one. You get real, and in this case, the production was partially correct. So there might be a state in between, so you could also mark it as that. And then you go to the next one. 
and so on and so forth. So you can also skip some sounds if you didn't want it. So that, yeah, that's it. And let's assume we've done enough. Um, in that case, we can exit out from here. So if we finish, we answered three, one was correct, one partially correct, one incorrect, and one was skipped altogether. So it tells you your accuracy very quickly. This is going to be for children to see as well. So they get a bit of feedback, but they also get something that's quite joyful at the same time. Um, and then you go to next and you will see something that you would recognize. Now, this is a report that was generated on the fly for that particular activity that we did. So it tells you the client ID. In this case, it was Selma. We chose uh, the age, which was four years and five months. It tells you the date. Uh, it was undertaken. What was the activity? How long did it take you? You can add any notes. You also have a phonetic keyboard in the top right. So if you wanted to uh, sort of be quite specific about the productions that you'd heard them say and what you'd like to correct it to, you could make those notes. And you can see the uh, the type of words that were presented. Which ones did they get right? Which ones did they get wrong? In this case, for race, you had a recording, so it's now giving you the recording, so you can listen it back as well. Um, and you might have noticed for a moment that it had actually recognized that 50% is not a very good accuracy score. So it created a goal for SENMAC uh, automatically. And we did that because it is very likely that a practitioner might say as well at the end of the activity, oh, that performance was good, but not where you would like that uh, production to be. So you would very likely go and set that as a goal. So how to do it because we accuracy you achieved, we can go ahead and create that for you. The benefit of creating goals is that our very intelligent machine learning based recommendation engine can now know um, what are the gaps and then starts to pick the activities that are going to be suitable for that child. So the more we are able to understand the gaps, the more we can offer those activities or anything else. So. As you can see, it's now given you spinner initial R set one because we already know that spinner, oh, sorry, the, the real sound is not doing very well. So it's now offered you a gamified version for you to continue. So if you were to tap there, it will now take you to the next um, activity. So it will now take you down the same sound uh, as well, but it will give you a very different experience. So let's go ahead and, and do that. So here you would notice there you go. So now you can tap on any of the sounds, it's race, you can mark it again. And then you can go ahead. Um, and then you keep playing maybe a couple of times, and maybe I think this time we give it a much better experience. So now we go from um, we go for three or four and then give them all 100%. Uh, so we get a report that looks much more positive. Now, um, this is the spinner game. There are other games as well. There is a snakes and ladder game. There's a coloring game. Um, the, the thinking behind offering games is to engage children in doing the activity, so to make it more motivating for them. But the underlying content is where the strength lies. Um, and um, you can have the same set of um, uh, activities run without any game or with game as you please. So this time we had a 100% um, result. OK, so we will come out of this one. And now we will go to uh, Stenmac again and we'll see what that dashboard looks like. Right, so you can see that um, in this list, we've got a few more activities. Some of them have now appeared here as a suggestion, and that's because it keeps an eye on what I'm using for Stenmac as the client, and then I can keep adding relevant activities to it. So it's already picked out that R seems to be of interest. So now, the more activities and the variety of um, sort of uh, targets you start to pick, depending on whether they're doing really well or not, you will start to add more activities automatically within it. So um, now we can we can go and see the goals section here. Um, now we had 
automatically found a goal because we didn't do very well for Sam Mac in uh, the production of R, because 50%. You can see that there's a nice graph that's appeared on the right as well, where it tells you how you've done. You've done two activities, so you can see the two dot points. One was 50%, one was 100%, so it's sort of short up and it's given you a target of 80% as well. Uh, if you were to tap on activities here, it will take you straight to activities filtered just by R. So let's do that. So you've got 242 results to pick from, and you can just keep going with that. Now, imagine you had a session, you were happy with what uh, you've seen so far, but you wanted to give them a little bit more to work on in their own home. So let's pick maybe five or six activities here. We can choose from coloring, some with games, others not, and we'll just add to therapy plan here. Perfect. So um, now what would happen is that there are some activities that are added to therapy plan. What you could also do is go back and now you can see um, in client intro uh, and here, you can see that I've added a bunch of new activities and can see in the list that these have become available. The benefit of that is you can actually, when you are going to see the client next, these will just appear straight away. So you don't have to um, go and plan your session ahead of time. It's already there. So the planning that is required for a session is far smaller because we already know what you're going to need. And you can pre-build this for your session in the future, or you could just issue it as a therapy plan. So that's uh, how simple the planning phase is going to be. If you go to client info, we will very quickly do a quick um, demo here. So there is a username here, and there's going to be a password there as well. So if um, any, you might have to do it on your side. So if you go to incognito windows, and what uh, I will keep doing the commentary in the meantime. So what would happen now is that imagine you've got a client and you want them to do some more activity from school, and you also want the parents to do some more activity for them from home, you would send this username and password to the school and parents as well. Once they receive it, they'll go on to, again, woka-quest.com, they'll go into login, and they'll put in that username and password, and they'll come to a screen like this. Now, if you remember what we had sent them, they were all our initial activities, which is what we've got in front of us now. So if you See, this view is a bit different because it's meant to be for the client. So it's much more um, sort of less fussy. There is no um, browse. Uh, there is no therapy plan. There's no printables. All the client needs to know is how to play the activity. And that's all we offered them to do. So it's very simple for them to just tap on the button and they get started. So let's quickly go and do a quick activity. So this one is minimal pair. So in this case, the minimal pair will open up uh, and you've got a different game this time. So you've got uh, a coloring game. Um, let's assume you got that right. And then you keep doing this activity. Now, every time this happens, we are storing this information and sending it straight away to the um, practitioner. So the practitioner will become aware of how the child is doing even before they step into the clinic next time if they've actually done the activities that you had given them. So if you flip back on it to the uh, practitioner view, uh, they would notice that this particular activity which we've just done is now available for the practitioner to view. Um, so that is um, essentially the client dashboard, uh, which is the way a school or parent could help the clients uh, practice while they're not seeing a clinician. So you can see that particular activity tells you that it was done at uh, 1550, which is what we've just done here now. And you can view their report of how they've done. Shrink and rink is what we're looking at. We've chosen that. They've got a score of one out of one, 100 percent, which uh, sort of brings us to the last bit of information uh, around uh, the practitioner. So if we go one more step back and okay, we'll go to the settings. So if you go to um, oh sorry, yes, studio as well. Uh, so in um, studio, 
uh, we can create our own activities. So if you very quickly, you've got a way to name a new um, activity. You can, you know, create vocabulary. Um, you can choose a therapy approach. So if you wanted to make a flashcard approach, um, and if you wanted to give it a game, so it's automatically built your description and how to play as well in it. And now what you can do is use uh, our symbols. We've got about three and a half thousand symbols ready to use. You can see them there. They're all included in the package. Um, you can also um, record what it should sound like. You can create that right away and then you can uh, add as many items as you like. So what you, you've done just here is that Annie's created an activity of, of her own. Um, so besides the 5,926 activities, you'll also see this activity appear alongside us. And to see that, we just need to quickly flip back to any of those clients. You go to browse and then you'll see that in your custom activity and you'll see that those are the two activities that Annie's got for herself. You can also administer your own activities. You can assign them for clients who do from home as well. So um, that is Walker Quest, um, and it is available on iPads, um, and it is also available on web. Uh, it is free for now, but it is likely that um, in in a in a little while it will start to become a paid. Uh, and in that case, it's likely to be five pounds a month uh, or fifty pounds a year. Uh, but uh, if you would like to try it out, it is available uh, by simply going to walker-quest.com, and you can um, sign up for free. So over to you, Catherine, and everybody yes. else, if you want to pose any questions. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, I really like the look of the games they look really really motivating for children um i just wondered there is a question mm -hmm. in the chat um but also okay. i wanted to ask you know the moving image that goes on behind is there a way to um change that or to remove mm -hmm. it yeah I'll bring it. yeah yeah so and it can show us very quickly there is a setting uh so you can uh keep it uh, static, so you can have a sunshine, which is just yellow background. You got simple, which is a blue background, or if you wanted vanilla, which is uh, just a back, like a light gray background, you could choose that as well. So if you do okay. one of those, we can quickly go in and check what that looks like. It look a little bit like this. Mm. Mm. Oh, great. Um, also, Pat, I don't know. Do you want to ask your question? Pat? Feel feel free to unmute. Hi, yeah, um, I'm a Senko in a small primary school. I was mm -hmm. wondering if it was something that we would be able to use independently or is it designed to be used by a speech therapist and shared with us? I'm um, not quite sure. So, um, I mean, a speech therapist's consultation is recommended. So I will give an example. Yeah. You might, Catherine might be the speech therapist that comes in and says, you know, Annie might be the client or she's having difficulty with R. Mm -hmm. As long as you know that, you can then go and pick for where is R in which position. But I suppose that's the element that you would need it's to the rely on. So it's the diagnostic bit that we... Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as you know that the difficulty is with speech and within speech, yeah. it's this sound in which position, then you can go and find that mm -hmm. and then uh, you know provision for that yourself. Thank you. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's just another little bit of feedback for you. Looks amazing, really accessible and easy format, and looks like it could be really motivating for a child. <laughs> Oh, thank you. That's amazing. I mean, that was uh, that was part of the the battle we were fighting to make sure that we keep it engaging enough that we can retain their interest. Because you know, any of these tools are only as good as the kids wanting to do it. If they yeah. aren't going to be engaged, they're just not going to do it. So uh, we want to try and keep it as engaging for them. So yeah, thank you for yeah, that. Yeah, the celebration window is really lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we spent a lot of time kind of uh, arguing and debating internally in the team on what works. Um, so it's uh, it's um, good to know that you liked it. Is there any other questions from anybody?
I had one for the group, if if that's okay, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to understand how would a platform like this fit in uh, in a daily day to day practice? How, how could this play a role? I don't know if anyone else wants to. I mean, I can see a lot of the students that we see have individual mm -hmm. programs set by speech and language therapists that the teaching assistants have to work with with the students you know they might be daily or weekly so I could see that fitting in really nicely there as an uh, additional tool obviously for us as CIMAC we're looking at assistive technology and technology the child can use so this is obviously really nice because it is a web-based interactive tool so um, mm -hmm. yeah I could see it fitting in quite nicely in that way I don't know if anyone mm -hmm. else has got any thoughts What were you thinking, Pat, when you're about how you might implement it? We have quite a few children that have speech and language issues um, and it's very difficult to be able to get speech and language therapists involved initially. But mm. obviously you've got to have that before this is going to be mm. useful. Um, I think once you've got it, it would be a really motivating tool for a lot of children. Um, mm. So it's something that I will look at. It's maybe not what I was hoping for, but that doesn't mean it's not good. It's just maybe I was just being a bit overly optimistic. Um, I do, I do like the con the the look of it and the way that children can engage with it. So I will, I will be definitely having a look at it. So thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. And do you think a tool like this would replace something you already use, or would that be in addition to what you already do? I would imagine it would supplement the the kind of activities that we'd lots of our children it's um acquiring vocabulary mm -hmm. and using grammatical structures rather than uh, speech articulation so obviously the examples you showed us today were more to do with the um speech sounds mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. looking down the tabs it looked like you would have things that would be more along the lines yeah. of what I'm looking for so I just need oh, to okay. explore. If it's a if it's a free sign up, I might. Um, chances are I'm going to sign up anyway and explore it a bit. So <laughs> right, schools have a very a small, but well, an invisible budget. So you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. What we what we could do very quickly is um, so sort of talk a little bit about colourful semantics, which you might have heard of before. Yeah. Um, so for language, we've got colourful semantics as the package that we tend to. Uh, offer. There are six right. uh, different modules within it. One is a, a multiple choice option, and then there is you know a load of this. So this is um, this is based on some of the work that um, uh, Alison had done as well, and uh, she does run training courses. So it's uh, on the basis of some of the work that uh, mm -hmm. she has delivered. But there is language work, um, and then uh, there's also social skills work. Um, you might be familiar with Lego therapy. Uh, I think it came from meeting a while ago and uh, they were certainly a big proponent of it so we've uh, we've taken a variation to that and we call it therapy blocks which is again the same idea of supplier engineer and builder and that in sort of instills the the communication within it so that's quite a nice one for you to explore as well if you're a trader okay. that sounds good thank you um unfortunately i'm going to have to leave the meeting now but thank you very much much appreciated yeah Thanks, i Pat. think Colourful semantics is often one that teaching assistants are given as a tool to yeah. work on with students. So, yeah, that would be really useful too. I know when we see students, because we, you know, often work with students using Clicker as a literacy tool, and one of the first things TAs often ask us is, is there colourful semantics? <laughs> um, so, yeah, that would um, be a good tool to use. Yeah. Perfect. Um, right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. I th I think, sorry. Go on. Oh, sorry. Oh, I just think we're coming to an end now, so that's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just checking. There's no other uh, questions there, so I think what I'll do is I'll end the recording or ask Annabelle to re end the recording. And um, thank you both very much. Um, yeah, really great.